Greetings, students, and welcome to this episode of The Professor Travel. I am The Professor Travel. Welcome you yet again. For those who are new to the site or who are new to this podcast, this is a location where we learn together, where we learn more about different countries and different locations that we would like to visit. This is the site where you can also discuss as a community the different culture and food and history and architecture of these different locations. Uh, we try to travel together, uh, take on those new opportunities, and maybe go to a place you haven't gone before. And then finally, let's enjoy it together. Let's also um, figure out you know, what worked, what didn't work, maybe how to learn from those things, and really in, in get the most out of those locations. Now, you can always follow me through my website, which is theprofessortravel.com. Likewise, you can find me on uh, YouTube or on Facebook at the same locations. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at theprofessortr1, or you can find me through Blogspot, uh, which is theprofessortravel.blogspot.com. Today, I'm very excited to introduce to you a very good friend of mine. He is our visiting professor today, students. Uh, please say hello to uh, Professor Ivan Posada. Say hi, Ivan. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? I'm very good. I'm awesome. very happy to be here with you. Thank you so much, and thank you for thank you for sharing your knowledge with my students. I know that they really appreciate it. You and I go back several years, uh, but for the listeners who aren't aware of you and don't know a little bit about you, can you maybe share a little bit about your background? Uh, maybe some uh, information about your educational background, and maybe some of the places that you've traveled to. Yes, yeah, so I'm Ivan. Uh, I'm from Colombia. I went uh, to the University of Phoenix, and I graduated. You were my coach over there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I, I work for a dental company now. Nice. So, and yeah, I just have a passion for travel everywhere. So I started going to Europe and as, as I was going to different places, my uh, need for new different cultures grew. And uh, so I've been going uh, many places like Thailand. I have gone through, last year I went to uh, Denmark. I was in Germany. So yeah, that was pretty much it. I gotta tell you, um, and this is maybe something that you don't even know, but you actually inspired me to travel more. Uh, when we met, um, I was your advisor uh, when, when, we, when you were going to college, and I started seeing that you were going to some of these places, and I was really excited, especially when, especially way back in the day, you went to Egypt, and I was like, wow, he went to Egypt, that's so cool. Yeah, that's good. And so I really became inspired by that, and ever since then, over the last nine years that I've known you, I've been pretty much traveling at least to one country every year, uh, something to try and take in a little bit more. So you actually taught me, and you trained me a little bit more on how to do that. So thank you for sharing that with oh, me. Oh, that's good, that's, I'm glad to hear. Now, and during this podcast and during this blog, we are talking a little bit about Colombia, which is your home country. You recently yeah. had an opportunity to go there and visit. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about why it was that you decided on doing it this last trip? So it was very good. So actually, I went with my uh, American family. I wanted to bring them to Colombia just to see where it came from and uh, to show how much uh, the country has changed. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Surprisingly, it was a super good trip. They were very excited about it. They were very happy. And the most important thing, they came back, like wanting to tell people to go over there. And <laughs> she's just like, no, it's no problem. You should go. It's beautiful. It's a lot of nature. So it was a very good experience. Oh, wonderful. So when you started to plan this trip for you and what you say, now you refer to your American family. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's them, my family here. I don't have any family here. My mother and all my relatives are in Colombia. So this is the people that I spend all my time with over here on my holidays. So uh, I want to share part of me with them. I always, they share all the holidays with me, like Thanksgiving, Christmas stuff. So I wanted to show them uh, where I came from. That's fantastic. I really, I gotta say, that's amazing. I, and I'm yeah. so happy you've had that cultural exchange over the last few years. It's been fantastic. And, and yeah. likewise, getting to know you, it's been amazing too. So thank you. Uh, thank um, you. <laughs> so how long in advance before taking this last trip that you went on, did you start planning on going? So for this trip, uh, I started to plan like uh, four or five months ahead. Okay. It's, it's the best way to do it when you're going to Colombia. So you can get like a very, an expensive ticket. 
So uh, over there, like especially like you go like for Christmas, the ticket can go up to like twelve hundred dollars. Oh, wow. And um, planning ahead, you can find it for like four to five hundred dollars. So it is. Uh, if you plan ahead, you can get like a a real deal. Okay, nice. Now, and just to confirm, for these locations that you went to throughout Colombia, you did not require a visa or any type of travel medications or anything like that, correct? No, there is no visa, no medication, nothing is needed. Okay, perfect. So let's get into the nitty gritty on the vacation that you did. Uh, so when you were prepacking, what kind of weather were you anticipating or what kind of events were you anticipating on doing down there? So over there, like, uh, you pretty much just like need shorts and jeans. You know, jeans when you are in the city and shorts when you go into uh, the mountains and stuff like that. You may need like a little sweater because you know we are um, we are we, we have always the same season. We don't have uh, fall winter. We always in the same season, but because we are in the mountains, the, the climate changes. So you can be here, uh, let's say. 70 degrees, you can drive 20 minutes and it can go up to 80 or you or it can go down to 50. Yeah. So it's always good to keep like a little sweater with you. And just so my just so my listeners know and just so my viewers know, um, what a what a culture shock you have as far as the weather goes, having lived in Columbia for a good part of your life and then moving to where you're at now, which is at Massachusetts. So yeah, no, it's a, you know, I love it here. I love the I love the weather and I love changing the clothes and all the stuff. And you know, we have in Massachusetts a very distinctive season seasons. Mm -hmm. So I think we enjoy everything. So when it's hot, we want to go to the to the beach every weekend. When it's cold, we just want it to be outside, wear like a nice jacket, go for a drink. So you know it's nice, but it's also nice going back to Colombia and seeing like then you, for this, uh, this weekend, you want to go to a pool. Mm -hmm. So you just drive like 20 minutes down the, the mountain and you can find like a hot wood. <laughs> so if you, or you want the opposite, you just drive the opposite way. So it, it is good. Very, very nice. Okay. Um, did you have to put, uh, like um, bring any type of sun protection, like hats or like anything for your skin at all? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like uh, sunscreen is uh, very important. Especially, uh, I went to Cartagena, which is uh, the coast of my country, so it's very hot over there. And I was taking like boat rides and all the stuff, so you need like protect your skin. That sounds so awesome. Okay, I'm gonna get into that in just a little bit. We're gonna go over your itinerary because I'm really excited about it. Um, now, but you left out of Boston Logan Airport, is that correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. And how long was this trip to Colombia? What was the what was the whole amount of time that you were gonna spend down there? Oh, uh, so I went for 12 days. Okay, sounds good. So I flew from Boston to Panama, Panama to Medellin. Okay. I stayed in Medellin for three days and I went to the uh, the coffee area okay. in the country, which is like three to uh, four, four hours from Medellin by car. Okay, perfect. Uh, I came back to Medellin, then I flew to Cartagena for five more days. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna ask you about each of those places in just a minute, but before we get into that, I wanna know um, with all the time that you had, because you're gonna be down there for 12 days, did you actually park your car at the airport or did you just get it like an Uber? How did, you, how did you decide to get to the airport and do everything there? Yeah, so I have family over there, so they picked me up, but I think the best way is uh, to re uh, arrange like a travel, or you can even take a bus, there's like a bus that's right in front of the airport then take you down to the city and from the city you can call a Uber or take a taxi. Okay, and did you do the same thing at Logan as well uh, when you when you arrived? Because I know you were going with some of your American family as well. Yeah, no, I, I took a Uber. Okay, perfect, all right, sounds good. You know, so, it became like, uh, that's the best thing when you go any, anywhere is like the Uber. <laughs> well, it's all over the world Uber. now, so. Yeah, but it's the best thing to do because you know, you know how much they're gonna charge you ahead of time. And you know, I have experienced this in, in other countries where you go and they say, oh, it's $40 to take you to the hotel. And I say, I give you five. And they say, no, you're crazy. But two seconds after they are chasing you for the $5. <laughs> so you don't have to hustle that much in this case, you know how much you're gonna pay and you know when the cat is coming. That's the one thing I, I'm a little bit hesitant. So just so you are aware, and my listeners are already aware of this as well. This next year, I'm going to be going to India, and I know one of the things that I'm really concerned about is the transportation over there and how that can 
vary all over the map. So mm -hmm. I might just take you up on that uh, on that suggestion to take a look at Uber or Lyft or one of those uh, ride sharing yep. companies to see maybe that's a good maybe that's a good opportunity there. You know, and just make sure that's good um, on that. Yeah, absolutely. So which flight did you end up taking out of Logan in order to get to Panama? So I flew with Copa, which is uh, five hours from Boston to Panama. Okay. I have like an hour and 20 minutes layover. And then uh, from Panama to Medellin, it's around 45 minutes an hour. Did you have to change planes at the time or did you stay with the same travel carrier? Uh, yeah, we're the same. Okay, cool. And did you fly coach? Did you upgrade to first class? Did you? No, I go coach. Okay, no, that's fine. Some I people. Want to travel, I want to travel more through the year, so I want to stay. I want to keep it in the low, uh, low with the, with the budget. Very smart. <laughs> there are people who travel more on a budget, and they're like looking for all the deals. Um, how do, now? Let me ask you this: Did when you were looking uh, for your flights, did you go through like a? Did you go directly through the carrier to find them, or did you go through like a travel aggregator site like Expedia or? Uh, yeah, I usually uh, go through Kayak. Kayak, okay, cool. Yeah, and you know, I I go and investigate. So like, uh, if the ticket is uh, this price, let's say with American Airlines, so I go into American Airlines website and just trying to compare to see if I can find something better. But most likely, like Kayak will give you like the right price. So. So yeah, you should go with the same uh, website. Yeah, I actually use travel aggregator sites like that too. So that may, I think it's I think it's pretty good, especially if you're going for an inexpensive flight. It's a great way to find that out. Yeah, absolutely. So now, did you spend any time? Uh, you spent only about you said I think you said about an hour and a half in Panama before you ended up yeah. going over to Colombia. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you arrived in Colombia, did you immediately go with your family somewhere? Did you get a hotel? How did you make those arrangements? You know, yeah, I, I have family in Medellin, so I just went to my family's house. Um, later on, we ended up like going to different hotels because we went to different towns close to Medellin. We went to Guatapé, actually the picture that I, uh, you have there. Yeah. Is in Watape, which is uh, this huge rock. They have 750 steps to go all the way to the top. That's quite a lot. And, <laughs> and you can see a huge reservoir, which is very beautiful. That's like an hour from Medellin. So over there we stayed. Uh, uh, actually, we rented a, a house. Okay. So you rented a house. Uh, did you did you go through like Airbnb in order to do that, or did you find a different order? Actually, I found that house through Hotels.com. Okay. Uh, but uh, depending where I'm going, I usually uh, use uh, Airbnb or Hotels.com. Okay. I, what I try to do is I always try to use the same site because either you get like points or you get you can redeem nights and stuff like that. Like with Hotels.com, every time that I, uh, if I book like 10 nights, I get like an extra night uh, for free. Yeah. So I try to always to do it through the same website. And to my students, by the way, I absolutely endorse that. I, it, it doesn't matter whether you go through a specific uh, location like a hotels.com or I use, uh, I use a company called Rocket Miles. I know I use uh, another company called Ocean Miles. Um, I, I also go through uh, another company for my flights called justfly.com. Um, so regardless of which one you decide to choose, you can choose whatever one you want, but the loyalty programs that Ivan is talking about are very, very good. Uh, because they'll oftentimes give you an advantage to stay with that one carrier through the length, through the life of your of your tri of, of your uh, travels. So it's a really good opportunity. So thank you for mentioning that, by the way. I really appreciate that. So now is your opportunity to to educate my class on some of the places that you've gone. Um, so maybe, maybe you tell me about each location that you went to, and maybe one thing that you did at each of those different destinations that you went to. So, um, so I went to Medellin. From Medellin, uh, I went to, we went to Huatape, which is like a, an hour. Then from there, we went to the coffee area of the country, which is very beautiful, all the coffee plantations. And it's these very colorful towns. They're like, they're like really amazing. And you see how the towns are like very intact, how they used to be in the past. And it, it was such an amazing experience because, you know, 
because of the problems that the country had in the past, we never experienced tourism. Mm. And now we see a lot of Europeans and Americans to the point that if you go to a restaurant, you can ask for a menu in English. Uh, and most of the waiters and waitresses, they all speak English. So it's, it's very nice to see it's actually when you're there, it may be, it make you like very emotional to see the progress that the country has. Um, so it is very interesting. So that's one. And then after that, I went to Cartagena. Can I ask you a question about um, the emotional experience of seeing your country develop? Um, I, I know if I talk to some people, they may be concerned that as their country develops or as maybe English becomes a secondary language that is being spoken there, oftentimes uh, the people and the residents of those locations, the locals, are concerned that they might lose out on some of that cultural identity. How do you feel about that? Actually, the opposite. Actually, everybody is very excited. I have, uh, I talked to some people from, from work. Yeah. Uh, I work for a European company and I have many of them have gone back, back into Colombia. And I always ask about the, what is their experience and they feel like uh, the people is very excited to see the change and see people coming to visit them and being able to interact with other cultures. They've always said and they, they feel that the people was trying to protect them all the time, trying to offer different things that they know and they can know have over here, like some different tropical fruits and stuff like that. So I think that's the emotional part is just going over there and see how excited the people is to welcome other countries and other like people with different backgrounds, different languages, so it's very interesting. Okay, perfect. So let's break down each of those different locations that you went to, and let me, let me ask you a little bit about each of them, okay? Yeah, absolutely. So Medi Medellin. Medellin is the first Medellin, one, correct? Yep. Yeah. So what did you do while you were there? So Medellin is very interesting. So it's a very big city. Mm -hmm. So we went just to the center of town. We have a, a massive museum of Botero. You know, Botero is from my country, so he donated many sculptures. Mm. Uh, so it's one park, it's called the Botero Park, when you can see and take pictures of all the sculptures that he has donated to the country. There is uh, the museum, the Gold Museum, it's another museum from Botero. It's um, uh, one museum from this very interesting woman is uh, called Deborah Arango, she's a painter, and they have a, a whole museum with her art. So most likely we went to do all that stuff, uh, seeing everything about like the first day, of course, we had to eat the, the Colombian typical plate, is a uh, bandeja paisa, which is kind of big, but it's very delicious. So um, <laughs> that's one of the things that we did the, the first couple of days, just going through the museums, going to like the main areas, like going to the center of town to see the Botero Museum, and just to experience like at night is one park in uh, it's called Parque Lleras, where like people just go and have fun. It's music, it's like bars where you can sit outside and just like, it's a very fun place to go and see people back and forth, walking back and forth. So it is, it is cool. Nice, fantastic. Sounds like a fun time. So yeah. your next day or your next, your next location was where? So from there, uh, Watape. Watape. So Watape is an hour from, uh, from Medellin. Okay. And it's very famous for, uh, it's called uh, the rock, El Peñol. So it's a very huge rock. And they have the stairs. Then you can go all the way to the top. Okay. It has like a, in total like 750 stairs. Uh, it's a little difficult, you're like, but it's like, it's very interesting as you go, you turn around and the views are insane. So, I, got, I got that picture from you, it looks amazing. Yeah, I know, it is very good, so that's one. And it's uh, this huge reservoir over a town that was drowned. So oh, the, wow. the town is still underneath, and on top they have, uh, they mimic how the town, the, the town, the town that was drowned looked like. Oh, so it is a very interesting, yeah. Nice. And you can do a lot of water sports over there. You can do like, uh, uh, you can rent a boat, you can uh, rent like a, 
uh, it's the jet skis and all the stuff. Very cool. So after that, where was your, you said the next location, you went to like the coffee area, is that correct? Yeah, the coffee area. So it's uh, mostly, it's Manizales, Pereira, it's all the coffee places. And it's, it's like the most amazing part of, uh, it's one of very amazing part of the country because it's a lot of nature and it's a lot of stuff and uh, people is interested to go and visit it. Like, you know, how like the plantations are, how they plant next to a coffee plant, they put like a, a plantain tree. Mm. Because like the plantain gives like the shadow like for the, for the coffee to grow. So it, it's a lot of stuff to learn. Plus also you can go and just try a very delicious coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it was, um, that, that part is very beautiful. It is one area then a um, long time ago, years ago we had a, an earthquake and one of the, the ways for the president to recover the area was to promote uh, tourism. So a lot of these people who own plantations and have like big, big houses, they were trained on, on hospitality. Mm, nice. How to bring people to the plantations and show like how they cultivate the, the coffee, how they pull it out, how they pack, how they roast it. So it's a very very interesting part of the country to visit. It sounds really interesting. And it sounds like you also got like coffee right there on the spot, it sounds like that might oh, be. Oh yeah, you are like right next to the plants. So you see how they roast it, so it's, it's the best coffee you can get. I would imagine because <laughs> it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's not it's not canned, it's not sealed, it's not anything. It's it's right there. Yeah. Right there. It's gotta be the, oh wow. Okay, now you're making me want to go. Especially, yeah, especially with everybody being so inviting, it sounds like that's a really great opportunity. Um, yeah, and, yeah, it is. And then after that, you went to Cartagena, is that correct? Yeah, so I went to Cartagena, which is uh, is the walled city. So it's kind of like uh, very similar to like Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. This one is bigger. It's uh, part of the it's a UNESCO site. So it's very interesting to see all the renovation and how they preserve the, the city very intact. So it's a lot of cultural things to visit, to see. It's also delicious, amazing restaurant. And the thing is like these three locations from Medellin to the coffee area, Cartagena is completely, is three completely different weathers and three com uh, completely different like, let's say cultures. So, the food is different, the, the accent is different. So it's, it's a very interesting uh, part of the country to go. If I'm going to spend any time in Cartagena, as, as, and I imagine that I probably will in the future, specific because I like to cruise, and that's, I think that's a port that they have yeah. out of there. What would be, like, give, give me your top three types of food that I would like to order when I'm down there. So it's in the coast, so it's all uh, fish. Okay. So it's all, you're gonna get a lot of like ceviche, you're gonna have a lot of like fried whole fish. It's pretty good. Uh, mo most of the plates over there are served with coconut rice. Mm. So they take the actual coconut and the water and they made the rice with the coconut and with the water, so it's pretty good. So it's like a sweet rice almost. Uh, yeah, a little sweet. It, it, it's super delicious. They also have, um, what else? Uh, they do this fish on uh, coconut juice. Okay. It's very good. We do, uh, they eat a lot of plantain. Mm. And for breakfast, they eat, um, it's kind of like a tortilla. We call it arepa. arepa. It's kind of like a tortilla. They fry a little, they open it, they put a neck inside, and they fry it again. So it's uh, very good. It's kind of like uh, our version of uh, breakfast sandwich. Nice. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Very cool. And so, um, so now you now you've completed your trip. Uh, did you leave out of Cartagena or? Yeah, I flew from Cartagena back to Boston. I stopped in Panama. So Cartagena became like is like the last couple of years very popular. So now I think they are promoting it a lot. That's why they have like direct uh, flights from New York to Great. Cartagena. Awesome. And you can find sometimes like tickets for like $350, $400. That's amazing. I just, I can't imagine it being that low. Every time I go to look for anything down in either 
like the lower Latin America area or South America, it, the prices are just insane. And that's my, maybe it's just the time of year I'm looking at them, like you suggested. Yeah. So, I'll you know to... what is, is good over there? Like to stay over there, you can go super cheap or super expensive, but you can get it in both uh, either cheap or expensive. You can get like a very good experience. So you see a lot of Europeans now going and staying in this little kiosk by the, by the ocean for like $7 a night. You rent the whole kiosk for like $7 a night. It doesn't have electricity, but you, you are like super in nature and the locals will cook for you like fish then they catch in the morning for like three or $4. Or you can also stay in these very uh, preserved uh, uh, houses a little more expensive, but also you get another type of experience. It, it is very cool, so I think it's very affordable for anybody who wants to go there. You can, and it's amazing restaurants, bars, it's always music, and museums, culture, so it is, it is very cool. It, what, what is the preferred drink down there? If I'm going to order something alcoholic, what would I want to order? So in Cartagena? Yeah. So in Cartagena is Rome. Rum everywhere. Yeah, nice. Rum is the main uh, drink over there. If it's in Medellin, it's aguardiente, which is kind of like, uh, kind of like sambuca. Okay. But it's not as sweet. Uh, yeah. So, uh, in Colombia, everybody drinks more like a shot, more than cocktails. But now you 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 see like also the regular cocktails, like you want like a mojito, bloody mary, a margarita. You can find those. Okay. Cool. No, that's that's fantastic. So on your way back, um, did you have any experiences with? Um, oh, and by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you. Uh, when you were doing all of these trips to these different locations, did you pre-plan those things, or did you pretty much just taxi it the way there? How did you decide to do your traveling when you were actually in the country? So all the hotels, everything was pre-planned. So everything was uh, booked. For a lot of the plans that we did uh, through the day, like, uh, you know, in Cartagena, you take a, a boat ride to these uh, Rosary Islands. Mm -hmm. There they is 27 uh, uh, islands, uh, like one hour, hour, one hour by boat from Cartagena. Okay. And they're called Rosary Island because they, when they take a picture from, uh, right. from the airplane, from an airplane, they look like a rosary beat. Nice. So, that one, I look at it uh, to prearrange that, but it was very expensive. Okay. So I went on TripAdvisor and I started reading all the reviews and all the stuff and how it worked. And actually, I was able to book them over there for like 50 to $40, like 40 to $50 uh, the whole trip. So oh, you, wow. go in, you go in the morning, they bring you to the island, they give you like a little juice uh, when you arrive over there to greet you. You have like a little cabana. Okay. Uh, includes the launch and they includes the transportation back to to Cartagena. Very nice. Okay, cool. Now, coming now, now we'll move back into your return trip. Okay, so coming mm -hmm. back to the U.S., did you have any? Um, were, were there any challenges with coming back through customs? Um, did you did you have anything with passport control at all? No, nothing. No problem at all. Okay. Um, no, nothing. Okay, good. And then. I know we had talked about global entry. You said you don't, you don't have global entry, but you do have something different that you do. Can you tell yeah, us? Yeah, I want to do the global entry so badly, but I haven't had the time to go for the interview. So I have the mobile passport. Okay. So the mobile passport is an app, and you can upload all your information ahead of time. You can scan your passport, so you can take your own picture uh, and select uh, where country you came from, which is the port, like. Uh, if you bring any uh, merchandise over $10,000, all those regular questions that they do for customs, and you have all that in your phone, it gives you like a barcode, and when you go to customs, you only have to show your phone, they scan the barcode and you can, uh, can keep going. That's pretty, how fast is it? I would imagine it was very quick. Super fast, actually. Uh, my friend, they have the global entry, and I was actually ahead of them. Wow, okay. Yeah, so you're... it is good. Now you're making me think a second about getting a little entry. <laughs> oh, you should get it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, post vacation, uh, what are your takeaways? Like, what were the pros of going to, going back to Colombia? Because I know you've been there 
for many, many times. What, what, why do you keep going back? What, what, is the, what is the draw for you, apart from maybe the family? Yeah, you know what? Actually, more this time than ever, uh, I came back feeling very proud of my country. Uh, feeling very proud of what, how the people is treating the tourism, how the people is taking care of them, how they are making a big effort to uh, learn the language, to be more approachable, and to make people feel uh, comfortable being in a country that has a past where like, nobody wanted to go and visit. So I think that's the, the biggest thing for me. I think it was very emotional to see all that. And coming back and seeing my friends saying, you know what, I will recommend to anybody to go over there. I think it's so beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. Now, yeah, no, it's very good. now, not that there are any cons over there, but what are, what are some things that a first time traveler to Colombia should be aware of? What they should be aware of, uh, you know, you have to read a lot. You know, like anywhere is gonna be a good and a bad places. And you don't want to be in the wrong location. So you need to read and you need to educate yourself where you're going. Okay. Uh, you usually is some locations where it's very specific for like uh, tourists. Then they accommodate the tourists. It's going to be other areas they are not, like everywhere in the world. Okay. And you should know that. But uh, to be honest, in this time, everything I think was very perfect. I think that was the perfect trip. We didn't have any problems, uh, not, no problems with the food, no problems with people. It, the only thing maybe in Cartagena, they approach you a lot, like uh, people oh, then like, ask your name, I ask for your name and they start like rapping with your name. So they, they want like some money. <laughs> so the people, yeah, they start like singing and making it stuff up. And, and there is very cool, but they expect something that, you know, they expect you to keep them. Yeah. Like it's, it's, people are always like trying to sell you something. But I think it's uh, in any touristic area, you're going to find people always trying to sell the necklace or try to offer you like a, a picture or stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And the um, only thing you just need to say is uh, no thanks and keep going. I would think so, yeah. And that's that you really have to be firm in some places. I know it's like you don't want to be mean, you want to respect the culture, but at the same time, you probably have an agenda anyways. You gotta go somewhere and if someone's stopping you and stuff like that, it's like, come on, I I, I gotta get going. So if you don't want it, don't make eye contact. Yeah, Just keep exactly. Going. <laughs> Just keep your eyes to the ground. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. That um, works. You've already given us some really good value adds with uh, some of the sites that you've used, the passport information. Um, and some cost saving endeavors, you know, maybe looking at the time of year and, 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 and the location. Um, any other best practices that you want to share with any of my viewers or, or listeners? You know, um, one of the things I always do, I never go by the price. I never go, like many people start looking by price and they, they tend to go for the cheapest thing. Yeah. I always start looking for the most expensive. Hmm. Not because I want to going to the most expensive hotel or, they, or buy the most expensive uh, trip. But I, if you educate yourself with the most expensive hotel, mm -hmm. you start going down and see what you can get closer to that for the price that you can afford. Ah, that's smart, yeah. You no, know, usually the most expensive hotel, they're gonna be in the best location. They're gonna offer like, the amenities they offer are gonna be like top notch. But like you can find something at your price point that maybe is like one block from the hotel yeah. or something they have like very similar uh, amenities. Yeah, actually, um, recently uh, we went to Europe and we, we, we had a pre-destination excursion in Rome just for one day. Um, but in, instead of getting a five-star hotel, because again, we're on vacation, we really, we really want to make it a really nice stay. We ended up getting a, we ended up going to a three-star hotel, but we upgraded the room to a suite. And by doing that, we were saving money well over the five-star hotel. And it was spectacular. We were like just a couple blocks from Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Steps. I mean, so it was a, it was a really good location. So I, I absolutely understand what you're saying about that. You can get some really good prices if you just kind of bargain down a little bit and look at, well, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I don't want to pay for that five-star place. But is there maybe a four star that's either close to it or maybe has mm -hmm. similar amenities, something like that. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So 
Well, I do want to thank you so much, Ivan. If people wanted to contact you and know a little bit more about Columbia, can they reach you uh, through Instagram? Is that the best way? Yeah, to absolutely. Yeah. Feel free to reach out. Um, I will do my best to, to help you to answer all your questions. And again, just to confirm, the Instagram is, you're at uh, Posada, spelled P-O-S-A-D-A-1492. One, four, yes, nine, two. that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, perfect. Well, I appreciate you being on this. Thank you. Will I be able to maybe speak with you again in the future if you do some more talks? Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Wonderful. And again, to my listeners, I thank you so very much for taking the time. If you have any questions or uh, just anything that you want me to know about, a comment, please feel free to reach me at scott at theprofessortravel.com. Until next time, I want to make sure that all of your adventures, all of your travels are an excellent adventure. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.